Watch you guys got another video here for you on how to make Windows 10 more secure. I get asked this all the time about making a video on making Windows 10 much more secure than what it already is. And that's what this video is going to be about. It's pretty simple and pretty easy to do. So I thought I'd make a quick video showing you what to do. Now, Windows 10 or any other version of Windows will run uh, as administrator by default and it's important that you disable this feature and run it as a standard user. The reason why is because malware and other types of infections will normally need administrator privileges to do the damage that it's trying to do to the operating system. So by running as a standard user it gives you a bit more control on what can install on your system and what you want to block. So let's take a look at how we can bolster up the security on Windows 10 and make it very difficult or if, if even possible for malware to actually run and install on Windows 10. So let's go to computer management here by right clicking on the start button. And inside here you can see uh, we've got our user accounts inside local users and groups. Inside here we've got our user accounts and you'll see that the main administrator account is been disabled. So by default your main account will be running as administrator and what you want to try and do is get this set up as a standard user and then use the administrator account to ask for permission to install programs and stuff like that. So open up the search box and type in their control panel and then click on control panel to open it up and we'll go into user accounts here and we're going to take a look inside here. So inside the user accounts, when we click on this, you can see that this account is a local account, but it's an administrator account, which means anything that wants to get installed on here, it doesn't really need any permission. So if you drop malware on here, it will automatically install on the system. So in the search box, type CMD and run this as administrator. And this will open up the command prompt box as administrator. And now we're gonna enable that administrator account by typing net space user and quotation and then administrator and then we put another quotation mark there and then space forward slash and then active colon and then we can put yes push enter and this will then uh, enable the administrator account this is going to be our main administrator account since we've already got one on the system we might as well use it so go back here to computer management here. We're going to right click and refresh and you should now see that administrator account has now been enabled. So what we can do now is go back and uh, make our Brightech account or your user account and make this a standard account. So go back to control panel here and we're going to open up control panel, go back into user accounts right inside here and what we need to do now is change that Brightec local administrator account and make that um, just the normal standard user. So as you can see here, it is already administrator. So we're going to change this to standard accounts and click change account type. Now we've got Brightec as our local account and it's not administrator. So you can change a bunch of stuff inside here if you wish. I'm just going to leave that is. I'm going to make sure that I've got passwords on here. You can now see that administrator account is active and it's also going to have a password on it because we're going to enter that password on there. So I'm going to enter passwords for both of these accounts and this will also tighten up the security a little bit here. So create a password here and uh, once we've done that we can also do one for the administrator account. Now this will burden you a little bit because you will have to put in the password anytime you want to make any sort of major operating system changes or install any sort of software. So that is the important part of this. So you can see we are now password protected on here and we're running a local account on our main account. This is our administrator account. It's also a local account and I'm going to give this a password. So make sure we give this a nice strong password here. Now this is the password you're going to use when you want to uh, install any programs or make any major changes to the operating system. So you will have to put this password in. So we're just going to create a nice strong password here. So with that done, we can now create a password here. And you should now see that administrator account is a local account with administrator and it's also password protected. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what we've got here. So I'm going to quickly log out here. 
and log back in just to make those changes. So I'm going to sign out and uh, we can then sign back in. So I'm going to sign back in into the main account here. Now remember the main, main account which is your account will not be administrator account now so you have no privileges to do anything. So to download this program I'm going to download a piece of software off the internet and of course we're going to put this onto the desktop here so just save this and we'll download this. And what we're going to do is go ahead and click run and when you click run you will get this box popping up. This is the administrator account kicking in saying hold on a second you need to have the administrator password to install this software on the system. Now if this was a malicious piece of malware uh, with a no name or anything like that you would definitely know that that's a piece of malware and you would obviously click no. But we want to install this so we're going to say yes and allow that to install. But let me just quickly show you here a couple of examples here. So we can see here Without this password, this program will not install. So by typing the password in, it gives us the access to install the program. Very quick and easy to do. Now this works very effectively on stopping a lot of malware that wants to run on the system and install into, say for instance, System32 and other areas of that operating system. If it doesn't have the permission or privileges to run, it will generally restrict it. Now this is malware. As you can see here, I've got some malware samples which we'll try and open up and we'll try and put this onto the computer system. So let me quickly put the password in for the uh, malware here and try to drop that on the system. That is the wrong password. Let me try infected. There we go. And you can see it's already coming up with this password here. And even if I try to drop this in by putting uh, the password in here, which you should never do, it will get blocked because it's getting blocked by also the antivirus program that I've got set up here and also my firewall here is trying to block all of this information here. So let me try one more thing here. You can see Bitdefender is blocking uh, this straight away. So this is the free version of Bitdefender which is a very powerful piece of um, software to protect yourself and you can see how well that would work so if I suddenly see uh, this malicious piece of malware trying to run on the system I wouldn't give it privileges and I would just say no and I wouldn't type in the password and of course it won't be able to do too much damage because it isn't administrator it can't do anything and if it wants to do malicious stuff to your system it will need those administrator privileges to do its damage. So you can see here let me just quickly try and put those in and it's not working. So it won't let me do that, okay? So I've got a simple uh, setup here of standard user, Bitdefender free antivirus, and I've got the uh, Zone Alarm firewall to protect me. And again, you can also use something like a Cronus um, backup software as well to back up your data and that will also protect against ransomware as well. So you're getting an all round protection and that's probably the best and safest way to protect your system. Now I can tell you I've used this system and I've tested it against malware and I've said no to every single piece of malware that I run and it couldn't do any damage to the operating system. All it done was dropped the folder with a bunch of um, silly images and stuff like that it couldn't actually do much damage to the system at all so if you use this correctly and you're very very sensible and using a bit of common sense then malware won't be able to destroy your operating system or do any sort of damage to the operating system at all because it will need administrator privileges to do that okay so that's the most important part when you're using this setup so let me just quickly show you by opening up a standard known good uh, type of zip file here just to show you that um, we can open this up and zip it up and drop it onto the desktop. Let me quickly show you a normal uh, zip file which is safe to use. I'm going to just quickly put the password in here and put this onto my desktop here. And Because it's safe to do and it's no malware in here you can see it lets me drop that straight onto uh, the system but because it was malware related before it was blocking it and stopping it from working so it's simple to do and easy to use and all we've got here is a free version of Bitdefender 
zone alarm free version and we've got this running as a standard user account. So by using a bit of common sense, Bitdefender free and a zone alarm free and a standard user account, you won't get infected at all and Windows will be perfectly safe to use. Now, if you'll see if I try to make any sort of changes to the operating system here, it will ask me for the administrator password. So it can't make changes to the operating system uh, without putting that administrator password in and you should be using that Windows UAC to the maximum capacity and you won't get infected. It's that simple. So I'd say common sense is probably the most important part for when you're using a computer because with common sense you're not going to get infected. That is your best security measure right there. Common sense, free antivirus program, Bitdefender, uh, Zone Alarm, uh, which is a free firewall and you can also have a, a standard user account on there as well and use something like a Cronus backup to back up all your data which will also have um, anti-ransomware built into it as well and you should be pretty much protected. So with this simple setup you should be a lot more safer on your computer and also have more control on your computer. For instance if you was in your email client and you go and click on, say, for instance, a so-called image file uh, as an attachment, and that image file has been masked as a, a you know an image, and it's actually an executable file. And you click on it, and it suddenly wants to get administrator privileges to install something. You're going to know that that was a piece of malware on that email, and you can just say no, and it won't have that. Um, a, administrator privileges to do the damage to the operating system and get into the vital areas of your operating system where it needs privileges to install those files so just bear that in mind it's a lot more secure using this method but it is also a bit more uh, you know tiresome to keep typing in your password but again if you want to stay safe then this is the only way you can uh, do that and use a bit of common sense that is really the most important part anyway that's about it for this video guys for today my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk hope this one's been useful to you i shall see you again for another video tomorrow thanks again for watching bye for now now if you haven't subscribed yet hit the red subscribe button and hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos